Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. Well, we opened one of the best rares in the set, Siege Gang Commander is excellent. Although, we've got some pretty strong uncommons as well. On Sarah's Wings is great. Icy Manipulator, great first pick as it's colorless and fits into any deck. Rona's quite strong. In the common slot, we've got a Blessed Light, Unicorn, Reproach as all decent cards too. But uh, probably gotta go with the Siege Gang, even though. I see is kind of the more flexible pick as it fits into any deck, but I think the power level of Siege Gang is just too high that we can't ignore it here. And then hopefully we'll end up in a red deck so we can play Siege Gang. Alright, second pack, we've got a few options. Although the pick is probably just going to be the Sheevan Fire that's in our colors and is probably also just the best card in the pack overall. I'm also a big fan of Blink of an Eye, Skin Witch is a nice one, uh, Fungal Infection is playable but I wouldn't take it over Skin Witch, um, and I wouldn't take Deep Freeze over Blink, so pretty straightforward Sheevan Fire, best card in the pack and it's in our colors. And third pick, alright now we gotta make a decision, the Journey Mage would be a nice addition, would pair well with the red card since blue red wizards is a good archetype. Otherwise we could consider Spore Swarm since we already have Siege Gang to maybe set us up for a go white theme. And then uh, if we also have a Spore Swarm then if we can be lucky enough to open a Song of Freilies or maybe a Wild Onslaught, some of the go white themed cards um, and that type of deck could also make use of a Jousting Lance if we've got a bunch of tokens to equip. That's pretty good. And there's also the Wizard's Retort, but I think I would take the Journey Mage over the Retort. So at the end of the day I think I'm going with the Journey Mage. Alright, and then now we can take a pretty straightforward Blink. Probably the best card in the pack. Followed by, I think, the Skin Witch but no reason to take the black card when we've already got a blue card and blue red wizards is a great place to be. So let's take the blink. And then now we could take a Coldwater Snapper as a reasonable curve topper in the blue red deck. There's nothing else that's too interesting. Unwind is sometimes playable. Lightning is more of a sideboard card. Overseer also not the best in uh, the wizard deck since there's so many better 3 drops that synergize better in the deck. So let's take the snapper. Now we've got kind of a decision. We've got two 4 drops but they're all pretty medium. Cyclops better creature on defense than an attacker. Uh, Explorer can have some synergies but overall it's mostly just a 4 mana 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Goblin is a pretty replaceable 2-drop, but has a bit of synergy in our deck already with Sheevan Fire and Blink. So I don't hate the Goblin if we are in need of a 2-drop. And then there's also Opts as a nice cantrip, and in the Wizard deck you'll sometimes end up with a few cards that care about spells, like your Gidu Lava Runners, your Adelis. So I think we'll take the Opts since it kinda ends up making our deck most of the time just as a cantrip and then it can help us dig deeper towards our more powerful cards like the Siege Gang Commander. And then now I guess we'll take the Cyclops since there's nothing else. Looking at other colors, Soul Salvage is a decent card but I don't think we need to take it here since we're pretty committed to blue-red. Nothing here that we want. Fire Elemental, usually not very playable. The artifacts are both pretty bad. I guess we could take the rare for the vault here. Alright, I'll take a Journey Mage. A nice wizard for our wizard deck. And that's kind of the card I was referring to when talking about Kelden Overseer being 
a card that doesn't often make the cut in the wizard deck just because we have cards like Journey Mage instead. And one toughness is also kind of a liability with all the sampling tokens in the format. And then now a pretty late Gitu Lava Runner that I don't mind picking up. And we'll take a Goblin, not a big fan of Rescue. Could take an Unwind, but don't have any 2-drops yet, so Goblin might make the cuts if we don't pick up any better ones. And a Warlord's Fury could make the cut, that's just a cantrip that puts a spell in the graveyard for the Lava Runner. Alright, so the first pack went okay. We've got a nice bomb with Siege Gang Commander. We've got Journey Mage as nice interaction alongside Blink to bounce. And uh, three wizards already, Journey Mage, Lava Runner plus Journey Mage. And the Shivan Fire is an excellent spot removal spell as well. So about as good as you can hope for a first pack. And in our second pack, what did we open? Our rare Storgar, which can be okay. It's going to be a lot better in like a black green sapperling deck where you can make a bunch of tokens that you don't mind sacrificing. But overall, the 7 6 body isn't too impressive just because, again, there's all those sapperlings as chum blockers. There's efficient spot removal spells that can kill even large creatures. So, just vanilla creatures with no abilities aren't too interesting. Uh, we're definitely looking at this Goblin Barrage as a nice removal spell, dealing 4 damage for 4 mana. We even have some Goblins we can sacrifice to deal 4 to the face as well. We've got our uh, Goblin and the tokens from Siege Gang. So Barrage kind of fits in perfectly. Skizik is playable but unexciting, especially in the Wizard deck. It's pretty replaceable, even though it also has a bit of synergy with our uh, Bloodstone Goblin having Kicker but I think we want a removal spell over it. And then we can hope to wheel a Warlord's Fury, we can hope to wheel maybe a Deep Freeze. All right, well, this could be a deck that can leverage Time of Ice pretty well. If we're aggressive enough, can tap two creatures and then bounce all tapped creatures on the third chapter. So pretty nice tempo play. There's also Fire Intervention, which would be quite strong. I think Time of Ice is going to be better for us. And then there's nothing else that really competes. Wrath. I'm not going to go out of my way to splash. And the right isn't particularly splashable. So, seems like a pretty straightforward Time of Ice over Fire Intervention. All right, well, this pack is pretty strong too. Two good wizards for our deck, Journey Mage and Journey Mage. I guess G2 and Academy, we'll call them. And then uh, Weight of Memory as a decent card draw spell as well. I think this card is worse than Divination most of the time, but we don't have any Divinations yet. Between the two Journey Mages, I think we prefer the Academy for the most part. But of course, if you've got like five Academy Journey Mages and no Gitu Journey Mages, you need to make sure you have some cheaper wizards to make this cost 4 instead of 5. But I'm still going to take the Academy Journey Mage for now. Alright, another blink of an eye. Seems pretty good. So now that we have double blink and double Academy Journey Mage, we just want to make sure we pick up enough cheap creatures so that we can leverage our board advantage once we bounce the opponent's creatures so we can get in damage while the getting's good. Also, we have Time of Ice, which wants us to play more creatures to the board early, so we can leverage that extra advantage we get from tapping creatures down from the opponent. But I'm still going to take Blink over Intervention. Alright, well, that's a gift. Fifth pick, Sheevan Fire, not going to say no. Even though we're on the lookout for more creatures, can't pass up on a Sheevan Fire, and there's nothing else we really want here anyway. I mean, I guess we can take a Rampaging Cyclops. It does attack for 4 if the opponent doesn't have any blockers, so it does kind of pair well with our bounce spells with Journey Mage and Blink, I guess. We could take a Glider, but it's just such a bad card if you're on the defensive, since it doesn't block. Let's take a look at our curve real quick. So for Ambitious, we can put Journey Mage at 4. So we already have a lot of things to do at 4. 
So we could consider the Overseer just for Curve as a 3 mana play, but we would much prefer more Journey Mages of course over the Overseer, but I guess for now it's fine. Since Blink is also kind of a 4 mana play in this deck, so taking another 4 drop doesn't seem great. So we'll take the 3 drop, since we don't want uh, assistance. Alright, now we probably want a memorial land that draws us extra cards if we're flooding out as a great tool to have access to. Uh, something like a war caller, even though it's not amazing, we kind of want in this deck right now just because the way our deck is built with all these bounce spells, we just want more two drops in the deck in general. But uh, can't take it over memorial to genius right now, so we'll take the memorial. And I'll happily take another Lab Runner. Would be the second one. We have lots of cheap cantrips already. Lots of cheap instants and sorceries in general. So this is going to be a 1 mana 2-2 two -two haste. And then we already have a Cold Water Snapper. Our deck is probably going to be relatively low curve, given that we have all these Gitu Lab Runners, cheap cantrips, cheap removal spells. So, I think I'm happy taking another Warlord's Fury just to help us enable the Gitu Lava Runners. Of course, First Strike also not irrelevant. And then we can maybe play a lower land count to make up for it. Uh, War Chief does have synergy with Siege Gang, but is just not a good card. 3 mana, 2 2 haste. That only makes one card in our deck, 1 mana cheaper. Still not really good enough. Alright, I guess we'll take Homerad Explorer. Although I guess there's no chance we play that one, given all the 4-drops we already have. I doubt we'll play Assistant, but I guess we'll take it to diversify a little bit. Alright, perfect, another Gitu Journey Mage. That's what we want. And no chance we play Slumvoda, small chance we want a Fervent Strike. And I guess we'll take a Snapper now. Alright, so moving into the last pack, what are we looking for? We've got a decent amount of interaction with our double journey mage, double blink, time of ice, barrage, so the removal's looking okay, but then we mostly just need to work on the early part of our curve to make sure we can put some creatures in play to pressure the opponent with. So additional 2 drops and 3 drops would be welcome additions. What did we open? Well, we opened a pack with another Icy Manipulator. We didn't take it the first time since there was a Siege Gang in the pack. Could take it now since it's still an excellent card in any deck. And then we can hope to wheel another Gitu Lav Runner. There's also Arcane Flight which pairs well with our Cold Water Snapper. And we can always put it on one of our Wizards to fly over and deal those last points of damage as well. And there's a Deep Freeze as another removal spell, Opt as another cantrip. So there are some decent cards for us, but I think we're going to go with Icy as just a more flexible and powerful option. Wow, a Varix Bladewing. Well, Siege Gang is a bomb, and Varix Bladewing is also a bomb. Great at 4 mana, even better at 7 mana. We'll have to skewer deck pretty heavily towards red. We want to skewer deck towards red anyway, because we have double Gitu Lava Runner we want to play early. So we'll take the Blade Wing. Um, we would love another Journey Mage, of course. Would like a Surveyor as well to kind of smooth out our draws, make sure we can cast our spells when it comes to our double red cards. But uh, let's take the Blade Wing. All right, well, Tempest Gen sadly not very good if we're going to skewer deck more towards red. Definitely a playable card if we were heavy blue. If you've got like 10, 11 islands, then Tempest Gin is a pretty serviceable card. But I don't think we want to take it here. So we could consider the Kelden Raider, but again, we already have a lot of 4-drops. So I'm not too interested in another one. Um, probably looking at Opt as just another cantrip to smooth out our draw. Even though, again, if we're skewed heavily towards red then playing a 1 mana blue card isn't ideal. I guess Cyclops might be just worse than the Kelden Raider, but even then, 
we still have a lot of stuff to do at 4. So, I think I'm still taking the opt over the Kellen Raider here. And then hope to pick up more 2 and 3 drops for our deck. Uh, do we have any legendaries for Temporal Sundering? I guess we've got a Varix Blade Wing, but that's it. So yeah, that's not gonna make the cuts. Anything else we wanna play here? Not really. Don't want Slimvoda, don't want Candle. So yeah, there's nothing we want here, so I guess we'll take the rare for the collection. And then now we've got a decision. So normally it would be a slam dunk fire intervention here, but we do want more 2-drops, and Keldon Warcaller is a 2-drop. So it's actually a more interesting decision than uh, usual here. Yeah, it could definitely be the case that we should just take the Keldon Warcaller here, even though that's a little bit depressing having to take it over a fire intervention. Yeah, legendary sorceries are indeed pretty tricky to make work in this format. I don't like them as early picks since they don't often make it, so you kind of have to be lucky to pick up enough legendary creatures or planeswalkers and then get those legendary sorceries late when people don't want them and then you can make them work. But uh, it doesn't happen very often. If we knew we were going to get one or two more two drops in the next few packs, then I would take the intervention, but we don't know that. And our curve is kind of lacking. Like, if we put the Lava Runner in the 2-drop slot, our curve looks a little bit better. But I would still like way more 2s and 3s to fully leverage Journey Mages and Blinks. But maybe it's not such a big problem after all. Since we have some good late game tools as well now with Varix and Siege Gang, so it's not like we can't win a longer game. And in that case we might just want the better card here, which is the Fire Intervention. And we'll take the fair intervention. Alright, now we can take our Keldon Warcaller over nothing. Buffuddle can be playable too. Plays kind of well with some of our bigger creatures. But I think we just want the cheap creature here. Take another Snapper over nothing. And we can take our Arcane Flight or another Warlord's Fury. Already have two of them. I doubt we need a third. It's mainly there for the Gitu Lava Runners. But having an Arcane Flight, especially if we play like one Cold Water Snapper, isn't a bad way to close out the game. So we'll take a flight. And then now we can take the Lava Runner on the wheel and that kind of helps us fill the early part of our curve. I'm not gonna take a Frenzied Rage. Doubt we'll need a Fire Elemental, but I'll take it anyway. Uncommon for the Vault. Alright, so I think we've got a pretty sweet blue-red deck here. Good amount of interaction, some nice bombs, and uh, a reasonable curve. The curve could be better, a bit of a lack of threes in general, but uh, hopefully the power level of our cards makes up for it. Alright, so let's take a look at our actual curve here. So these early lava runners are pretty important just to get in early damage, and then we can rely on some of our flying creatures like Bladewing, maybe Arcane Fly to close out the game, Commander can also burn an opponent out. I think we do want the Snapper plus Arcane Flight combo, Otherwise our deck might be a bit weak in the late game if there's a ground stall. So it's unclear what we should cut. I could see playing 16 lands with double opt, double Warlord's Fury, maybe even shave a Warlord's Fury or an opt. Um, do also have a memorial in our mana base, which is nice. We'll have to look at the mana distribution in a second. It's probably going to be favoring red over blue. Um, maybe even 10, 6, although that's pretty low on blue. So it might have to be 9-7. But then we still need to make two cuts here. So could shave a Fury pretty easily. And then we need to make one more cut. Uh, don't love the Keldon Overseer. Usually gets blank pretty easily. So that might be the cut. But if we're on the play and it gets in 3 damage, it kind of did its job. 
and then we can maybe like blink of an eye to turn later, get in another 3 damage. It does start adding up, but overall I'm not the biggest fan. All these other cards are pretty decent. Warcaller, just a 2 mana 2-2 two -two here. If our mana base is going to be 7 islands, 9 mountains, then opt seems okay still. If we go 6 islands, 10 mountains, then opt becomes a bit more sketchy. Because if we don't have double red on turn 2, then we can at least still go like opt plus lava runner. But uh, yeah, for mana base is heavily skewed towards red, then we would maybe rather just have another Warlord's Fury so we can play Fury and Lava Runner in the same turn. But with 9 7, I think Opt is still okay. Again, War Caller is not an exciting card, but I think I would put a 2 mana 2 2 in this deck. I think it's just to kill an Overseer. And then we'll try this 16 lands with 3 cheap cantrips. And then we've got 1 5, 1 6 drop. Although I guess intervention is also 5. Journey Mage is going to be a 4 drop most of the time since we've got 5 cheap wizards. And then Blade Wing is another card we can play with Kicker late in the game. Yeah, this seems okay. Also, I forgot to mention we need double blue for a kick to blink of an eye, so can't really go too low on the islands because of that. Alright, sand seems nice. Turn one lava runner, turn two goblin, turn three. We might blink, we might not, we'll see. Of course, prefer to play this kicked. We'll attack, if they double block we can blink. Ooh, Song of Freilies. That's a scary card. Into Surveyor. So... Yeah, our opponent could definitely do some damage here. Gets a Swamp and another Blink. Well, now that we drew another Blink, I actually don't hate the idea of blinking a token just to slow down the song. Could also bounce a song, but getting rid of a token denies them a mana and eventually a 2-2. So... We can attack. And then kind of hope the opponent blocks our Lava Runner so we can opt and blink. Opponent takes it. So we'll start by casting the opts, and then we'll see what we want to blink. If anything. Alright, we were gonna draw Warlord's Fury. But now it's probably too late for it. Alright, War Caller, so... Now it's more appealing to just... Deal 3 and then play War Caller, and then save the blink. To play it kick twice. Maybe bouncing song, maybe bouncing the token. Could also cast two blinks right away, although then we give up on quite a bit of value. Sapphirds, our opponent's going off here with all the tokens. And an Omnivore, so yeah, the power of uh, Song of Freilies here, just giving the opponent a ton of mana. The problem here is if we blink the song, like eventually they'll replay it, and eventually they'll get all the plus one plus one counters. So we're in quite a bit of trouble. We can kick the blink on the Omnivore, and then make some decent attacks. So that's probably the play here. Could blink the Omnivore and then blink the song. Not draw any cards but then delay the plus one counters being placed everywhere. But then our opponent next turn just goes Song and then taps their creatures to replay the Omnivore. I think I'm playing this kicked on Omnivore. And then we'll let uh, Song of Freilies happen and then try and fight through it with our Siege Gang. I'm 
Goblin Barrage can also deal four to our opponent, so there's definitely a line here where we can just try and burn our opponent out by sacrificing goblins and then dealing four with Goblin Barrage. But we also have to watch out for the Omnivore gaining the opponent extra life. So if we tap out for Siege Gang, what happens? Omnivore is basically a must block. We could say go, double block Omnivore and then bounce it if they pump it. Right now Goblin Barrage doesn't quite kill Omnivore since they have one mana up. Playing Siege Gang might just be the play and then next turn we have a few more options. Alright, very aggressive attack. If our opponent has a wild onslaught, we're super dead. Alright, opponent's being a bit more conservative, maybe. Never mind. Alright, so... The Omnivore basically represents lethal, so we have to block the Omnivore. And then we want to not take too much from the Sapperlings. How close are we to burning our opponent out? Not very close, considering they can always gain life with Omnivore as well. Um, keeping the Lava Runner as a wizard can make a Journey Mage cheaper. Goblin is a Goblin and could maybe gain Menace with a Kicker from Barrage. War Caller is definitely the weakest one to block with, so we could block like this and then take 4. Eviscerate Siege Gang. All right, and there's a Journey Mage, so five, six. We're actually pretty close to just killing our opponent here. Let's see, if we play Goblin Barrage, if we play this with Kicker, sacrificing a 1-1 one -one Goblin, we can kill the Sap Herd and deal four to our opponent. Our Goblin gains Menace, so that's three, essentially seven damage that goes to the opponent's face, putting them at two, and then we can use uh, Blink to get rid of the Surveyor. The fact is that they can still sack with Omnivore to gain two here. So they're essentially at 11 life. I mean, we're probably making this play anyway. Kill this. Oh no, we timed out. Either way, we can still Blink the Omnivore here. Let's see, would we have had lethal 4, 7, 8, 9? We would not have had lethal, we would have been one short, I think. But this is pretty ugly, because now we'll have to make some chum blocks. Blink with kicker, bounce omnivore, and then the goblin turns into a 3-3. Three, three. Trade here, block here. Tatiova. Play land, gain life, up to 10. Alright, let's see here. Play Lava Runner, uh, play this with Kicker, kill Tatiova, 4 to their face. We're a bit short, so it's probably better to just play Lava Runner with haste. Play Journey Mage, bouncing Tatiova. And then we can attack with this and this. Keep two creatures back and then try and set up lethal next turn. Could risk it and attack with a goblin, but then we're dead to any spot removal spell. But maybe that's worth it since we want to put them to five. Next turn, sack goblin. 
try and set up lethal that way. I mean, we know half of their hands, so... I think we risk it here. And send in the token as well. And then we could keep land in hand to play around Skin Witch kicked. One extra mana doesn't make a difference here. Because we wouldn't be able to play both spells anyway. Alright, opponent doesn't have a play. So, they should be dead here. Goblin Barrage with Kicker. Sacking our 1 1 token. Oof. That was a close one. So the turn we timed out, I think we were one point short of lethal. Alright, on the play. Yeah, seems like a keeper. Up against the red green. Not gonna bounce the scouts. So next turn we could play Journey Mage or we could play Time Memorial plus Gito Journey Mage. <laughs> Alright. Opponent on the four color special here. I think we're fine just playing a journey mage and then offering the trade and then keeping the academy journey mage for next turn, maybe. Bouncing Sphinx is not amazing since I get to scry to again, but still probably going to be the play here. Bottoms twice. So we're just going to play Journey Mage, Bounce Sphinx. And all of a sudden our opponent is a black-green sapling deck. Alright, so the ground is pretty clogged, so this is where we need our flyers, basically. So Arcane Flight on Snapper would be an excellent one. We've got our Memorial to draw more cards, Blink buys us more time if they replay Sphinx. But, um... Uh, yeah. Don't love our position. Presumably our opponent has a pretty good late game if they're splashing all these different colors. Probably black-green, splashing blue, splashing red. So we could attack with the snapper, hope our opponent blocks in such a way that Blink can kill. But what happens if they block with like three or four creatures and still kill snapper? That could be bad. But I guess it's probably the only play we have. And I do want to get in some attacks, they might just chum block, which is fine too. Alright, opponent's gonna go with the double, triple, quadruple, quintuple block. Fair enough. Our snapper's dying, but we can take out the Sphinx with us. 
I guess that's fine. And leave all the sapperlings. So if we do draw arcane flight, we'll regret trading off the snapper here. But at least now we don't have to deal with the sphinx for some time. And we could decide to sack Memorial, although then we can't cast Blink with Kicker anymore. Opponent attacks with the Thalad. And a Sap Herd. Getting aggressive. No spells in the graveyard, so... Could just take five, and then try and set up an attack back. They probably have some place to make here. To try and block our 3-2s. But uh, I don't quite want to trade yet, so I think I'll take five. Alright, I see. All the Thalads. That's going to be difficult to beat. Now we understand where our opponent wanted to get rid of the Snapper, because it was holding back all these Thalads. So now we need to draw our Varric's Blade Wing pretty much as a creature that blocks these three twos profitably. All right, Fury can enable some attacks. See what we draw. Land. And now we don't really mind sacrificing the memorial since we drew another islands anyway. Yeah, if we knew our opponent was going to play two more Deathbloom Thalads, I probably would not have attacked and traded with the Snapper, although the Sphinx would have been an issue then. Alright, so opponent takes three, that's fine. And then we have to decide if we want to blink or sack Memorial. And we'll see how aggressive our opponent gets. Ooh, Tatiova, that's rough. Really need to kill Tatiova. And hope our opponent plays defensively since they want to keep their creatures back to leverage Tatiova. Alright, so they're playing into our game plan somewhat here, since I don't think we would be able to really outrace our opponent necessarily, but we're pretty likely to find an answer for Tatiova here. Nice Siege Gang. Siege Gang's not a great answer to Tatiova, since we'll have to sack two goblins to kill her. And Icy also doesn't really do it, so we might want to just Link Tatiova, but if they draw land, they still get to play Tatiova and play land anyway. So it doesn't really solve the problem. So we're probably still playing the Siege Gang anyway. Could also use Icy to tap down the land. I guess what we could do is blink Tatiova and then Icy their island so they can't replay Tatiova. Could also blink Siege Gang to get more tokens. That's also an option we have. I think we'll start by playing the Siege Gang anyway here. And it could be correct to keep land in hand in case of Skin Witch. But we were also pretty mana hungry, so I think I'm still playing it out. If our opponent had Skin Witch in hand, they would have cast it instead of Tatiova. Alright, they did have a land, sadly. Not our Thalads. Alright, so still no answer for Tatiova, so we probably just have to kill her with two Siege Gang activations here. I don't think we're burning out the opponent before they take over with Tatiova. We do have enough mana for Blink plus I see their islands, but it feels like Blink on Siege Gang is going to be a better value play than trying to lock out Tatiova. So we'll just go for it here. 
to their side goblin. They might have their own blink to bounce Tatiova, but then we just sack another goblin. Alright, Tatiova down. I think I'm gonna keep playing out my lands again since we have so many mana hungry things we want to do. And then keep a blink instead of running out Icy, even though Icy tapping down the land could be effective. Just feel like we want to keep a blink in case they try and kill the Siege Gang. And then we'll maybe just bounce the Siege Gang end of turn. <laughs> Alright, I see how it is. Well, as it turns out, the blink Tatiova locked down their island play would have locked out both Tatiovas. Don't think we can play around a 2 mana instant speed removal spell on Siege Gang. Just gonna bounce it here with Kicker, replay it next turn, and then we can activate it twice to kill Tatiova yet again. Uh oh. Arcane Flights, and a Goblin Barrage. Alright, so now we've got a few more options. Okay, on Goblin Barrage, killing Tatiova. Go on the Flying Beatdown plan with Arcane Flights. So, it's 9 mana. If we play Siege Gang, activate twice. That's our entire turn. Probably better to just Barrage Tatiova, sacking a Goblin and play a Siege Gang. And then if they use a spot removal spell to kill our siege gang, they won't have one for the arcane fly that creature, hopefully. Not having the ability from siege gang up is a little bit unfortunate, because if they kill it, then we could have at least activated siege gang in response to deal 2 to something. But I want to make sure we can keep adding stuff to the board. Alright, Sphinx. Can tap that down with Icy. But yeah, opponents got a pretty powerful deck here. And they were able to cast their spells in time. Of course, the risk with a 5 or 4 color deck is that you'll sometimes not draw the correct lands early in the game and be unable to cast your spells. Journey Mage can bounce the Sphinx as well. So, opponents at 11. So, we don't need to deal much damage with this Arcane Flight to. Burn them out with Siege Gang. I think I go for it. Yeah, I don't really want them to scry again with the Sphinx. Probably should have played Icy first here. Get in for four. And hope they can kill our journey mage. Alright, pawn is down to 7, so... Technically speaking, we could burn them out with the siege gang. If our pawn tries to race on the ground, we can also chum block with our goblins and then sacrifice them before damage to still deal 2 to our opponent, but prevent the damage from the death bloom thalots. And if they play a second flyer, we still have our Academy Journey Mage in hand to bounce one. So. Alright, Harada. It's a scary card. Might see an attack with everyone. So the card that I'm worried about here is a kicked fight with fire, dealing 10 to our face. So if we can stay above 10 life, we should probably do so. Alright, so one goblin can definitely chum block and be sacrificed. And then we can make some trades. So right now we're taking 5, so we probably want to play it safe and block with one additional creature. Of course, kicked fight with fire is still gonna demolish our board. So... There's also the argument that playing around Fight with Fire doesn't really 
make a ton of sense since then they're just gonna kill our creatures. I guess we should jump the 3-2 instead here. So yeah, if they do have a kicked fight with fire, what happens? They kill everything. I mean, we're probably not winning that game either. And then... Could also kill their creatures instead of burning their face, but I think burning their face is probably the best way we have. Yeah, I'm not sure if the chum block is correct. Maybe we should just burn their creature instead. Yeah, just another Sphinx. That's fine. So if that's everything, then they're dead. Since we can bounce one Sphinx, tap the other one, and then activate Siege Gang. But they still have one card in hand. That's a good one too. Alright, GG's. That was definitely an interesting game. We fought our way through double Tatiova. Lots of Deathbloom Thalads, a bunch of Cloud Reader Sphinx. So, pretty intense game. Opponent also playing four colors, so you never know what you can expect. And I think this is the first time we haven't ranked up after winning a game, so we're starting to reach a bit of a plateau here. Alright, let's keep it up. On the draw, decent hands. Although a bit light on instants and sorceries for the Gitu Lava Runner. Usually not a fan of running out Arcane Flight early. Better to play it late once you know the opponent is out of removal. Alright, Goblin's not a bad pickup. And then hopefully we draw an untapped plan so we can play the Gitu Journey Mage on Curve still. Crows and Druids. Alright, it's gonna be able to block our Bloodstone Goblin. But I'm still not going to Arcane Flight here, so we'll just play the Journey Mage. This is where having something like a Run Amok would be able to let us attack still. Zero point on Black Green Midrange. So now we could Journey Mage, Bouncing Crows and Druids, and then... Attack with Goblin and Jury Mage. It's probably fine. Is this a uh, fungal infection, maybe? Ooh, kick skin witch. It's kind of brutal. I guess we keep arcane flight and hope that they don't have removal. They didn't really have a reason to use the spot removal spell yet. Keeping memorial is not a bad hedge because then if we flood out, we can activate memorial to draw two. And if we draw more expensive cards, we'll have a fifth land in play. Keeping intervention as removal is also reasonable since then if we draw fifth land, we can kill something big. I think I'm gonna try and cheese them out with this arcane flight. 
I guess this makes more sense so they don't simply block the goblin with the skin witch. Could of course use Sheevan fire to burn out the skin witch after they block. But maybe this is better. And then just deal six, we could burn the elf. They're not too far from kicking the crows and druids to gain a ton of life. Is it worth it to finish off the skin witch here? I don't think it is. I don't think I'm burning the elf. Even though that could be a mistake. Since we're just one land away from a kick Cheevan fire, kill something bigger. Our deck does have a lot of bound spells in it. Ooh, is this a Darigaz? No, fight with fire. Yeah, it's too bad. Our deck does have a lot of bound spells, so... Just trying to get in a bit of damage and then trying to finish them off could be worth it. There's Blink. Of course, the awkward thing with Blink and Skin Witch is that we then have to discard two again. I guess Journey Mage can attack and so can the Lava Runner. And then we can bounce if they double block. So hopefully no second skin witch. Opponent down to seven. Got a bit more burn with the Journey Mage. That's fine. Now I think it's worth it to kill the Lanner Elves so they're further away from kicking Crows and Druid, which would gain them 10 life, which is quite a bit. So we can Sheevan Fire, attack, put them to 5, put them to 3, and kind of force them to maybe play out Crows and Druid unkicked, which buys us more time. I guess we could also consider attacking and then letting them chum block if they want to. I guess that's reasonable. But I doubt it will. Alright, so opponent's down to three. Six mana available. They need 8 for a kicked Crows and Druid. And again, we've got quite a few bounce spells in our deck. Already went through a Blink and a Journey Mage, have one of each, and then a Time of Ice as well. Kate Chronicler, getting back removal spell. Land, so we can attack with both, put them to 1. And then hope they don't draw land. Well, if they had a land, they probably would have kicked uh, Crozen Druid by now. Alright, sweet. That was a close game. Had to make some tough choices there with a the Skin Witch. Alright, so this hand is decent, doesn't have any early creatures, so if our opponent just kills Varix Bladewing, then we don't have a ton of pressure, but I think we still can't really afford to mulligan this. We'll need a second blue source for a kick blink. Right, turn one Sheevan Fire potentially. Alright, that's a reasonable draw. Might as well represent Syncopate. No cheap removal either, so opponent camped a slow one. So I'll definitely run out Varix. 
doesn't die to cast down. Opponent doesn't have a creature in place, so they can't play a kicked Vicious Offering. So there's not a lot of ways to get rid of Bladewing here. And yeah, opponent scoops it up, so that was a quick one. Alright, this one's a bit of a sketcher. No red mana with a Lava Runner and a Sheevan Fire and a Warlord's Fury that we kind of want to cast early. We are on the draw. We have 10 mountains in the deck, or wait, 9 mountains in the deck since we're playing 16 lands. So 9 mountains, we basically need to draw a mountain in our first two draws for this hand to be functional. I think we'll have to mulligan this one sadly. Alright, not a great hand for lands could end up flooding, but we'll definitely keep bottom that one. So this is a hand where we wouldn't mind drawing a Varix Blade Wing, or a Siege Gang Commander for that matter. Turn to Chronicler as a 1-3. It's gonna block our goblin pretty well here. Actually, gonna play the lava runner since the goblin's not gonna be able to attack into Chronicler anyway. And this way we get to deal two more damage with the Gitu Journey Mage. Which can attack past the Chronicler. We're gonna do the same. So the wizard mirror here, our hand's not very good, lots of lands, lots of mediocre two drops that don't do anything. Let's get in there. They might have a syncopate in hand here, but we don't have anything worth countering. All right, they're gonna syncopate anyway, maybe because they feel a little bit threatened by our board presence otherwise. Maybe they have a slow hand. Ground is pretty stalled up here. Do we wanna Trade Goblin for Lava Runner. I guess that's okay. Lava Runner and Scholar attack for the same anyway. Yeah, this is not going well. We even scryed a land to the bottom. Playing 16 lands. We drew basically 8 lands already. And this deck doesn't have a ton of card draw spells. So, just have to pray that we top deck well. So, Varix Blade Wing, Siege Gang, pretty high up on our list. Just a blink of an eye to cycle and buy ourselves a bit more time would be fine. Alright, <laughs> let's play some 1 2s. Well, any instance or sorcery would be appreciated. Double blocking Academy Journey Mage is a little bit risky. But if they're... yeah, if, if our opponent's like thinking here, that probably implies they don't have anything. Alright, so we could just go on the beat town. Are we winning this race? So. Could kill Journey Mage and then deal four. Just double checking. Never mind. <laughs> we don't have any instances or sorceries in our graveyard. Well, then we could consider killing the Tolarian Scholar. And then we can double block the Academy Journey Mage if they attack. 
and basically trade one Lava Runner for a Journey Mage, and otherwise we can block the Chronicler. Don't think it's worth it to get in for two for taking three, when our opponent's at 18 and we're at 13. So yeah, I guess we'll kill the Scholar here. Not a great spot to be in, but at least her opponent's also flooding a bit. Ooh, Kellen Overseer. It's gonna represent quite a bit of damage. I guess we trade here, take six. And that's a land. Alright, all played out, I guess. Come on, Siege Gang. Alright. Goblin Barrage doesn't save us. Since we're at one, we can kill Journey Mage and we're dead. Alright, GG's. Alright, so on the play, the sounds pretty decent. Double Lava Runner with Opt and Sheevan Fire's cheap cards to turn them on. So, unlike the previous games, this time we'll have some 2 2 Lava Runners before too long. Short Sword. We're going to opt out of turn, so we get the most amount of information about the opponent's play here to know what we have to look for with the opt. Arcanists. Don't think we need to keep Island on top. Right. Fury's not bad. Not a land, so glad we put that land on the bottom. Now the question is, do we kill Arcanus to the block? Probably. We've got IC to tap down more blockers. Ooh, Tempest Gen. Well, would they block if we attack here? We could 2 for 1 with Sheevan Fire and Lava Runner, so I think we do still attack here, hoping they don't block, and then we can play Icy. Alright, looks like we're gonna have to 2 for 1 ourselves here, sadly, but I think it was worth it there. If our opponent's playing Mono Blue for Tempest Gin, then Tempest Gin is gonna be quite strong. Alright, not quite Mono Blue. I'm okay with the trade. So we're not in a great spot. Now we're definitely not in a great spot. Well, we can at least tap down the knight and attack the fairy, but next turn we'll be able to protect the fairy pretty easily. Blink, alright, blink isn't bad. Can pay for syncopates. Gotta try and kill the fairy here. No more games. You know what? 
I'm not done yet. Hopefully they just equip. All right. So at least the fairy's dead. Hopefully. I guess they could have a seal away. All right, and Varix gives us a nice follow-up play. Hopefully no unwind. They might syncopate for two anyway, just so we can't activate the IC. Yeah, so they get to save the fairy this way. Alright, that's an aggressive attack. I guess now the fairy would only go to one loyalty. And I can move the short sword now. Land, so we can play kick blade wing. Do we trade journey mage for an assistant? The fairy can kill the token if they want to. I don't think I'm trading. Hopefully they don't have any interaction and then we get to finish off the fairy. Our token does fly even though the animation doesn't show it. Alright, and our opponent does minus on the dragon. And sentry. Alright, so they've got two flyers. So they could chum block Blade Wing if they wanted to. Move to the trapper. Attacks. I think it makes sense to block now since it's not like the journey mage can attack past the scholar anyway, and this could be a pretty annoying creature, and taking four when we're at fifteen is quite a bit. But yeah, sadly, this is our only play. Force them to jump with the assistance. But our opponent will happily throw away an assistant just to get the fairy in play for an extra turn. Weight of memory milling us. All right, thank you. I guess they're afraid of decking after drawing too many cars with Teferi. So they've got a million cars in hand. Hopefully no removal spells or flyers. But we could still easily lose a race. They could have a blessed light after untapping two lands. And can't really afford to draw lands in this spot. So we gotta... Gotta try. I really should have seen that coming. The fairy finally dead. Can use IC to tap down the Avon. Wanna make sure to do it at the beginning of combat. But they're gonna move the short sword anyway. We kind of expect our opponent to have a counter spell. I mean, I guess I'll play the lands if they syncopate, they have to tap more mana. Alright, that resolved, so they didn't have a Giddens Reproach last turn, so I think we can afford to attack. Maybe they have all lands in hands, who knows. Buff 
befuddle, sure. So now the sniper can hold off the scholar. And Icy deals with the Avon sentry. Candle kills Bladewing, so there goes our offense. We can tap the candle, but opponent can just activate it in response. I guess our opponent's going to be decking first. The arcane flight is gone, so we can't hope to draw arcane flight to go on the snapper. Still have a siege gang somewhere in our deck. Also have a mountain in our deck. Yeah, we're not attacking here. So let's try and figure out what we have left. Two, two lands and graveyards, so 12 lands. So we have four lands and 16 remaining. It's not very many. And we have one at the bottom. So mostly action. Can't lose our focus and forget to tap down Avon Sentry, otherwise we're going to be dead. Alright, Journey Mage. Three, six, yes, I mean, doesn't matter if we play our land or not for Syncopate at this point. It's also reasonable to hold the Journey Mage in case we draw a Wizard so we can deal two damage. But you gotta play around the uh, swamp into Eldest Reborn. It's not inconceivable that our opponent's missing a color that they're splashing since they have so many cards in hand. Baird. Sure. All right, so now we can finally kill the Avon Sentry. I'm not going to sack Icy to deal for extra damage. Could always consider sacking the Goblin. But for now we can still tap the Sentry down, no need to kill anything. Alright, so 9 cards remaining, 11 cards remaining. Kick Drake, we want to kill that one with Barrage. Do we opt first? So let's see. Syncopate for six. So if we play Barrage first, we can play around Syncopate. So we should probably just cast this first, since we're going to have to do this anyway. I don't think I'm sacking anything. I don't think four damage is relevant enough. That works. Now we can opt. Should have kept up more blue mana in case of... Uh, a blink of an eye kicked. Definitely draw that one. And we can play it out. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. Can also shoot down the Avon Sentry. Opponent's got eight cards remaining. Not sure if damage is more realistic than decking. Gotta watch out for opponent, of course, also having another mill spell in their deck. And we did cast an op to draw an extra card. Got a few more blink of an eyes. I guess one more blink to draw a card, so we don't want to accidentally draw too many cards. Time of Ice. 
Time's a goblin. So how many goblins do we have? We've got four or five goblins total, so that's 10 damage. Well, Journey Mage now allows for a pretty big attack. So now we can just sack three goblins to kill them. Seems okay. We could have used Icy Manipulator first as well. That would have been fine, but they were dead anyway. Also something interesting to note is Icy plus Time of Ice. We can tap down an opposing creature uh, just before the third chapter of Time of Ice goes off, and then they will also have to bounce their own creature, since Time of Ice doesn't specifically mention opposing creatures that are tapped return to hand. It just says all tapped creatures return to hand. So that's also an interesting interaction to point out. All right, so we're five and one, let's keep it up. All right, so we're on the play with no mountains, but our hand is quite powerful. Problem is Bladewing is double red, so we're pretty far from casting that one. All right, this is a keep. And we'll keep a land on top. Green, black. I approve of the basic land choice. All right, I think it's a bit too early for our game flight still. And a blood tallow candle. All right, at least we'll be able to play siege gang. Get in there. Gotta watch out for fungal infections, but those would be able to kill Warcaller anyway. Now it's gonna be a Spore Swarm, fair enough. So you get to trade a token for a Lava Runner, basically. Lava Runner was pretty far from being a 2 2 here, so it's not too bad. Uh, so we'll kill the token, and we'll kill a token. We could opt and hope to dig for like a Sheevan fire, don't think that's necessary. And hopefully Siege Gang survives here, but yeah, if they have another land they can just use a candle to kill Siege Gang. We're left with three tokens, two cards in hand. Blink isn't bad. Yeah, I think we're on the Arcane Flight plus Coldwater Snapper plan. We can't play Kick Blink, so probably not gonna play it here. I'm not gonna keep Island, even though it would let us cast a Kick Blink. Probably gonna draw an Island anyway at some point. And grow from the ashes, they're ramping. Let's see if they're splashing or just green black. All right, they've got a white splash in there, not sure what for. Shana. Yeah, Shana's pretty scary. Although Icy is a good one. 
Although I see can't tap down Shanna. Probably just want to tap down planes and upkeep. Also an argument for tapping down Swamp to prevent kicked skin witches from taking away our two cards. It's gonna be a Sapherd. Yeah, Shanna's gonna be an issue. 6-6. Six, six. I think we probably take it for now in case we just draw an extra creature so we can gang block Shanna. Alright, Journey Mage will help. And what are we doing with Icy? Don't know if tapping down the land matters much now that they have an Envoy in play, they can make white mana anyway. Right now, the plan would be to. Just triple or quadruple block Shana. So I guess tapping Envoy makes the most sense to prevent more damage. Yeah, we can't use Icy on Shana, sadly, since Icy is an ability. Ooh, Forebear's Blade. So now we have to use Icy to tap down whichever creature gets equipped. But if they equip Shana, then we can't Icy. They're gonna equip the Scouts. And uh, I don't think we can play around the uh, spot removal spell here. Just gotta go for the blocks. Like this. Yeah, Cass, that was kind of brutal. So we can still blink with Kicker Shana to buy ourselves a bit of time. But at 14, facing a four bears blade, that's going to be rough. So trading away Lava Runner means that the tokens now also get to attack, but we kind of got a hope to draw a creature here anyway. Need a cheap removal spell here. So the Barrage can finish off Shana. I guess Journey Mage can buy us a bit more time. Don't have the mana to play both, otherwise we could Journey Mage and then Barrage can kill Shana. Oh, I guess never mind. Journey Mage actually can bounce Shana, because that's also an ability. I guess bouncing a token makes more sense, because then if they don't draw a creature, Barrage can kill Shana. All right, so we're trying to hang on here. <laughs> Sylvan Awakening. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that kills us. Shanna now at 12-12. All right, geez. All right, well, hopefully the last two go a bit better. All right, the sand seems okay. No blue for opt, but we've got a Lava Runner Shivan Fire. Blade Wing we can play on four if we draw any land. And then Island turns on both opt and Lava Runner.
Bodyguard. Is the standard. We're playing uh, Mono Red Aggro versus White Weenie. Maybe we should just play more conservatively here since we have the Varex Blade Wing in hand. And just uh, kind of trade Lava Runner for Bodyguard. Keep Sheev and Fire for their next play. And then if we can prolong the game where we can play Kick Blade Wing, it's maybe better. We'll see. Alright. I guess I'll take a draw step. Probably gonna have to kill it now. Sadly, no Goblin Chain Warlords to punish the one toughness creatures. Alright, double opt, no islands. I guess it's Blade Wing time. Hope they don't have a Gideon's Reproach. Well, turn for Varric's Blade Wing tends to lead to a lot of concessions, apparently. I'll take it. See if we can win the last one here. Alright, um, again with a double opt, no islands, but I think we'll keep. We've got double journey mage. And then as soon as we draw islands, we'll get the sweet, sweet card selection that opt provides. Alright. No Sheevan Fires. No attacks. So I kind of like playing Journey Mage Opt here instead of, I should say, Gitu Opt instead of Academy, since we might be able to bounce something more expensive. So we'll start by playing the Journey Mage, get that 2 damage. And then attack. Alright, looks like they have a trick here. Nope. Chum block. What is this? Who knows? Just a chum block. That's aggressive. Do they have a sweeper of some sort? I mean, there's nothing to bounce at the moment, but how bad can another journey mage be? And then now we can just go Opt plus Lava Runner. Don't need more lands. And then... We could keep Mountain in hand in case of future Skin Witches. Doesn't seem necessary. Alright, Siege Gang's pretty good. So, now what? Bouncing Siege Gang itself doesn't seem too productive. So we're probably bouncing a token. And then we can still attack with everyone. Does it change anything if we bounce the token first or wait? Maybe that changes how the opponent plays. Yeah, the extra token doesn't really enable any additional blocks. So I guess we can attack first. Could also... Barrage the Siege Gang attack with everyone, it's also fine. So either way we can attack first, since if they trade for Siege Gang, I'm happy. Alright, they're trading. And then we can bounce the token. Siege Gang was definitely a good play for them. They were very far behind, and now they're almost back to parity. Hopefully no Hexproof Snapper here. Any big creature we can bounce with the Journey Mage is probably game over. So 
So we can attack and then we have to decide what we want to do next. So I'm thinking we play the Warcaller, discard Intervention to Eldest Reborn and then keep Journey Mage to bounce another creature they might play since 5 damage is lethal anyway. So might as well keep the utility from Journey Mage. And Barrage might be able to burn them out if we draw a Goblin. Gotta watch out for Aldous Reborn plus Siege Gang here, that's a powerful synergy. They might be able to get back Siege Gang once again and that stabilizes the board pretty well. So hopefully they tap out for a big creature, we bounce it and that's game, but might not be that easy. And that one has axe proof. So that one we can tap down. So do we put our opponent to three here? That way if we draw a goblin at any point, Barash can... I guess ice is also an artifact for Barash, so yeah, we should just attack. And then put them to three. Hopefully, no Shivan fires. We can use IC to tap down a land as well. And then Barrage can burn them out by sacrificing an artifact. So what do we tap down here? Probably a swamp so they can't make us discard with a skin witch kicked. And then we might tap down the islands before going for Barash to play around a counterspell. And let's hope this works out. It's a pretty all-in play. Yeah, they need double black for kicked skin, which... But we can't wait until their main phase to find out if they have another swamp, because then it's too late, because they could float the mana. And we don't get a window to respond. Atlas, that's fine. Alright, so they should be dead here. We can tap down the islands, make sure they can't counter the barrage, and then barrage sacking manipulator. Pretty cool way to end the game. Doesn't come up a whole lot that you want to sacrifice your IC, but we could stop on upkeep, but we can also just tap down, go to our second main phase, and then barrage. So it doesn't matter too much here. Load all the blue mana you want. I guess they could have a blink for the icy, but that would be a pretty surprising play for them to make. So we'll target a creature. I guess Adelis is fine. And that should do it. Sweet. Alright, still at 4. So we didn't gain much rank, but at least we didn't lose a ton when we lost. So, not bad, not bad. Let's crack some packs. A Naru Meha. There's some uh, new combos with Naru, with Neo forms and all sorts of craziness that we could try out at some point. Pack one, pick one. What's the pick? Just probably the cast down over Naru. And easy four bears blade first pick here. Great card. Just got to make sure we have enough creatures and then the blade will do the rest. Otherwise the Thalad is solid. The Lander Elf is great. Academy Drake is decent too. Not sure if I would take Thalad over Elves. I think this is a pretty close pick, but Blade easily over any of them. All right, wanna thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.